supposed to take us like four hours to get here, but the person driving made it like in two. <laughs> right, yeah, right. We was low, yeah, we was zoom, we was getting it. And we all said, okay, what pause are we gonna do? What we gonna do? We was like, yeah, we just gonna, we just gonna do it, man. do it. So my man, I, I got a partner. His name is Saint Peace. Anybody know Saint Peace? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's my homie. And I, was, I told him I was like, yo, I'm, I'm coming to your, your city, dog. I need you to be there. And he was all like, yeah, man, I'm stuck on the other side of town. I ain't even make it. <laughs> monkey balls. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's my dude. That's my dude. That's my dude. That's my dude. So if y'all see St. Pete, everybody here is a witness to say Coco was actually in town and you didn't come out. And you tell him, send him a text message or something, dog, let him know. I'm gonna send him the video. I'm gonna get him his head. And then my other friend, his name is Hensbo, and you see, y'all might know the white guy, but that's Now we know Adam. Y'all know, okay, oh, Adam, who he uses the government name. We know Adam and Aaron. Adam and <laughs> okay, I got you now. He's in Evansville, so I come up to you know see my people and ain't nobody here. That's just fucked up. But y'all my people right now, so it's all good. <laughs> I keep New Orleans knife wood and the water stain remains in my soul. I hear the cries of the people seep into my ear like a Bourbon Street jazz note carried by the last gust of Katrina's breath. To remind me of those who had to find an end of Jesus by learning how to walk on water to escape death. But for them, there would be no water turned to wine, no fishes, no loaves, just a huddled mass inside a superdome waiting for White House Moses to look from the east and look to the west and help his people. To raise his staff, to push back the waters, to resurrect those who are now numbers with lost names. X is the unknown variable for the lost generations of lives that died outside of a convention center or consumed within the murky waters the day the levees broke. And help both sides marks the spot where rooftop refugees waited. And waited. And waited. To become evacuees from the places they once called home. They survived the heat and the water. They watched the corpses of neighbors, strangers, and lovers floated upon the waves. They gave prayers to the Creator on rooftop chapels because every day that they survived was reason enough to have on that day a Sunday morning service. And they hoped that the Creator heard the words and hadn't become a politician and forgot about them too. And it's those same politicians that get on TV screens telling that the waters will be rebuilt. What they don't tell you is it's gonna be rebuilt over some ninth ward evacuee slice of the American dream by Halliburton machines. But how do you rebuild a people's soul when the neighborhoods are as empty as government apologies and as hollow as government promises? I'm sorry, it's not spelled F-E-M-A. And it won't be found in Wisconsin Sands would have American troops fighting over oil. But it is a weapon of mass destruction used by government terrorists to keep the people looking for the truth within the alibis. As the mayor points a finger at the governor, and the governor points a finger at the president, and the president, well, the president points to figure at that political crony who had the business being in office in the first damn place, but shh, don't tell nobody. Now, this is the part of the poem where I'm supposed to digress and tell you that New Orleans was born when the saints were marching into the Superdome. But I'll be damned if anyone from the Ninth Ward was standing in those stands clapping their hands. At least it was the ghost of those who died in Superdome hallways coming back to see what it's like to have food and water. Because most of those from the Ninth Ward now live in different area codes. They were all told to get on the buses, they just weren't told they were going in different directions. Now Big Mama lives in Texas, she's got a daughter living in Florida and a son living in Utah. And they are holding Sunday dinners over phone lines and still holding prayer vigils for family members that they have yet to find. And all this makes me wonder, which bullet from the east made that butterfly flap its wings send the winds of change in a western direction? And how many right before they died added their own tears to the already rising water while praying their hopes and dreams knew how to swim? And then again, maybe it wasn't Katrina that brought their words to me. Maybe it was them, rising up one last time and combining their voices so that we poets, we writers, we rappers, we musicians, we DJs, hell, just everyday people would keep telling these Ninth War stories because news cameras no longer pan in their direction and news reporters, they only want to write about the new New Orleans instead of the one that drawn August 29, 2005. And they beg us, they plead us, they ask us, keep telling these Ninth War stories. Right. Because if we don't, who in the fuck is going to remember them? That's right.